Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. When I'm teaching our confirmation students about the Ten Commandments, there are always three questions that I love to ask them and for them to think about and struggle with. First question. If you were to take out one of the commandments and leave it off the list, which would it be? The second question goes the other way. What commandment would you like to add to this list? Now, frankly, those questions are mainly for fun, and we can have lots of answers. By the way, most times the one they would most often like to add is the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The third question, however, does have an answer. Which one of these commandments is the most important? The answer is the first one. You shall have no other gods before me. The one about making a graven image is an elaboration of this one. But here's the point I try to get the youth to see. If we keep this commandment to have no other gods before God, then we will naturally keep the other nine as a result. We won't make gods or follow anything or anyone else, including ourselves. This week I'm helping us explore the other gods mentioned in the Bible. We are urged to follow the one true God, but throughout the Bible other gods do get mentioned from time to time. Yesterday we looked at Baal. Today our focus is on Asherah. Asherah is not mentioned nearly as many times in the Bible as Baal is, only about 45 times. And at times, the word might even refer to one or another grove of trees. Asherah seems to be a goddess of love and beauty in similar ways that Aphrodite was in Greek lore. In most cases, she is understood to be the consort of the supreme god and therefore Baal's mother. Worship of her was a fertility religion, focusing on fertility for crops and in having children. Then things get complicated. At times in the Bible, Asherah is referred to as a goddess that people worshipped, and that she was popular is attested to by how many times the prophets preach against people believing in her. However, at other times, the word Asherah seems to refer to some sacred object, often in the temple itself. It seems that most often the Asherah as an object was symbolized by a tree form or shape, which connects the word to the idea of trees I mentioned earlier. To say the least, it is troubling that these objects to a foreign and false god found their way into the temple itself and into other worship places in Israel. Certainly, its presence there points again to how popular and accepted worship of her had become. Another disturbing reference comes early in Genesis when Jacob is having his sons. I'll remind you that Jacob had two wives, Rachel, whom he loved, and Leah, whom he got in the bargain for Rachel. A woman's job in that day was to have children. And so the two wives began to compete to provide Jacob with children. When one or another failed to get pregnant, they sent their servant girls into Jacob that they might have children by those girls. And so it is in Genesis 31:13 that Leah's servant girl has a son by Jacob, and in his birth she calls on Asherah in celebration. The name is connected to the word happy, and she proclaims her happiness at the birth and even names that child Asher. Even in English, we can see the connection between Asher and Asherah. One of the temptations in early Israel was to take the goddess Asherah and think of her as the consort of God. That's not right, although there are places, particularly in Proverbs, where wisdom is pictured as the consort of God. That's meant to assure us that everything God does 
is, do is done with wisdom. It seems that the worship of Asherah was comfortable and easy for most people in ancient Israel. She was popular. So maybe our challenge, even now, is to think about those things that we are comfortable with that somehow rule our lives without bothering us too much. Maybe we need the reminder that we are to have no other gods. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.